Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC Evening News and our top story. Health officials have declared war on the 80s Egyptian mosquito. That's the word tonight from Health Minister John Boyce. He told the House of Assembly the Health Planning Unit has ramped up its response against the pest, which is responsible for the deadly dengue fever, the chikungunya virus, and now the Zika virus, which is thought to be of particular threat to pregnant women. The most recent figures from the ministry indicate that 13 people have been confirmed with the Zika virus, with three pregnant women among them and more than 300 suspected cases. To the point where we are now saying to Barbadians, we do not want to hear us talk about controlling no Aries Egyptian mosquito anymore. We want to eradicate the Aries Egyptian mosquito from Barbados. That is the plan. And that, sir, will be the subject of a supplementary, which I just left the Ministry of Health. We are trying to make sure it gets here in time to be part of our Friday evening, Friday afternoon consideration. Well, Cabinet will soon be asked to approve a national strategy for the small business sector. Industry and Small Business Minister Donville Innes says the plan is in the final stages of preparation. He acknowledged the importance of the sector, noting that all economies depend heavily on small and medium-sized enterprises in order to grow. It's a sector that um, we have not done well at measuring. We come with a lot of anecdotal stuff about it. We have not really defined it within the Barbadian context. We have not set systems in place and measures contribution. But yes, sir, we talk about the challenges they face. And I believe that once the strategic plan is, is laid out there, and I thank the officers who worked on it, we are then in a better position to really understand the micro, small, and medium enterprise sector within the Barbadian context. And therefore, to be able to bring to the fore uh, solutions that will certainly help to, to move the sector forward. Well, Member of Parliament for St. John and Deputy Speaker of the House, Mara Thompson, says the recently opened David Thompson Health and Social Services complex since its opening has seen over 3,000 patients. She says more services are coming to support Barbadians utilizing the various services at that health care facility. The dental department is not quite in operation as yet. We're still waiting on the equipment. Radiology has to move in. And I'm hearing rumblings of dialysis, possibly, as well as detox um, for substance abuse sufferers. They intend to hold, this is the, the employees at the St. John Polyclinic, they intend to hold health promotions. I have that in the courtyard. And they intend to have educational sessions for farmers. Former Prime Minister and MP for St. Peter, Owen Arthur, has likened Barbados' economy to a patient in intensive care that urgently needs to be nursed back to health. He says the current growth rate of under 1% for the past eight years shows Barbados is not progressing and that our standard of living is falling. Mr. Arthur believes an annual growth rate of around 3% is required to reduce poverty and create jobs in the local economy. Barbados is still in an extremely delicate position in respect of growth, delicate. The patient is still really in intensive care. Growth, 0.3%, when you should be growing at 3%. Deficits are either 4 or 6%, when the deficit should be 1. The reserves falling. A $200 million problem in respect of your um, fine, um, public enterprises needs to be addressed. Sir, failure, Minister, is not an option. A plea tonight for parents to be held accountable for not providing proper supervision for their children. It comes from St. Thomas MP Cynthia Ford, who also wants authorities to do more to punish people who abuse them. There are some hard back men who are taking advantage of our young children. Too many pedophiles are in this country walking scot-free because they are somebody. They have a business. They are known by the minister, the police, and their friends. All kinds of nonsense. 
and our children are falling through the cracks. When children, when children are scared through rape, molestation, abuse, and whatever form, it lasts with them forever. And it is not only males, there are some females who have boyfriends 14 and 15 years. Something has to be done, Mr. Speaker, and I want the justice system to be able to be as effective as possible. Meantime, opposition MP for the city of Bridgetown, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, wants to see a social policy crafted for Barbados. Such a policy, he says, will take this nation into the future. Part of that policy, in my view, has to be related to the whole question of taking people away from welfare and putting them into the world of work. That has to be a primary objective, Mr. Speaker. The question of education, that also has to be taken into consideration because it was through education to a very large extent that we were able to ascend the ladder up in terms of the Human Development Index. The commemorative Broken Trident is continuing its trek across the parish of St. Peter as part of celebrations to mark the 50th anniversary of Barbados independence. And in a special ceremony this morning, one of this island's former prime ministers received the Broken Trident. All eyes were on the honored guests who were there to receive the commemorative Broken Trident. It was handed over to former Prime Minister and Coleridge and Parry School Old Scholar, the Right Honorable Sir Lloyd Erskine Sandiford, and former head girl Kiara Goodridge. Senator and former principal of the St. Peter Institution, Alwyn Adams, pointed out that the ceremony was something students should never forget. He says Coleridge and Parry has produced Prime Ministers, Governors General, and Governors of the Central Bank of Barbados. Senator Adams says students should be proud of what the school has achieved. The record is clear that this country school in the north of this nation has painstakingly earned the reputation of being one of the chief nurseries of our statesmen and outstanding citizens. The former principal told the students to work hard and they can accomplish anything and that they can compete with any other student on the island. You can stand alongside the brightest and the best. And once you are from Courage and Paris School, they have to look up to you. As part of the ceremony, those present were treated to several musical selections from the school's unit and choir. Coming up after the break, Barbados forges stronger ties with China. Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% Fiber to the Home Network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, playback from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One-of-a-kind connection. This is how we flow. And everyone looks at it and calculates. Greening, development, trees, concrete, and nature, money, and they come to a clash. And you and I can tell what happened. Trees of the Silent Sentinels, Sunday at 7.30 p.m., repeated on Saturday at 6 p.m. Trees of the Silent Sentinels. A lot of people think that fast boats are cool, and the girls show like the guys who ride them. But, like so many things about life, you gotta be careful. Having sex without a condom is like riding a bike without a helmet. It's just plain dumb. It's okay to have fun, as long as you're smart about it. My name is Daniel the Lion Fortress, and I'm different, and I'm making a difference. Live up, love, protect, respect.
China today reaffirmed that it stands in support of Barbados's further development and improved capacity to defend itself. A signing ceremony at St. Anne's Port marked the official commitment by China to provide military aid to the Barbados government through the Defense Force. China's Ambassador to Barbados, Her Excellency Wang Qi, and Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Defense and Security, Timothy Maynard, signed the agreement, which the Ambassador says is a gift and a gesture of friendship. Mr. Maynard says China has been a valuable friend to Barbados, providing scholarships and key investments since 1977. He believes the military boost will go a long way. The assistance which China is providing today to the Barbados Defense Force and by extension, the government of Barbados will help us to respond with greater assurance to humanitarian and rescue missions, both within Barbados and in the wider sub-region. Barbados, and in particular our soldiers, welcome this type of support, especially since we live in a region where natural disasters can suddenly erode decades of hard-fought gains for small open economies like ours. Well, the Fair Trading Commission receives about 250 queries from the public every month. Director of Consumer Protection at the FTC, Judy Maynard, says this is working to the Commission's benefit as consumers are becoming more aware of their rights. What it's doing is bringing down the level of complaint and then we, what we're doing now, we're carrying out research on topical issues to make sure that consumers in advance will not be hurt because we look abroad for trends. Ms. Maynard was speaking during a public awareness program to mark World Consumer Rights Day today in Jubilee Gardens, the city. The event hosted by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce was held under the theme, Antibiotics Off the Menu. Commerce Minister Donville Innes says his ministry will continue to ensure that the rights of consumers are protected. They have a right to ensure that where they are dissatisfied if their products or services, there is some form of redress, and normally through some government department in particular. And we certainly from the ministry are duly bound to ensure that we provide the best possible environment to protect our consumers. So many Barbadians would ask, so what is that all about? And I use very simple terms to describe our work and our commitment to the rights of consumers in Barbados. Well, it seems that things are looking up for the local film industry, which is increasingly getting support from public and private entities, along with continuing public talks with cultural practitioners regarding the Cultural Industries Bill. The Ministry of Culture is also promising a forthcoming film and digital media bill. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Ruth Blackman, says the bill will comprehensively cover the developing film industry. At present... There are provisions made under the Cultural Industries Development Act, and a film commissioner is in place. However, we recognize from the queries we receive that we need to go further. The film and digital media will address these areas of concern. Recogni recognizing the potential of the area, we have embarked on some developmental programs, just as, such as the digital media program, and we have Ramat, our resident tutor, here with us this morning. As I speak, we are training just about 50 young persons in the field of filmmaking. The Permanent Secretary addressed a group of artists gathered for the presentation of Cameron Bailey, who is the Artistic Director of the Toronto Film Festival. During the breakfast meeting at Baobab Towers and Warrens, he shared with cultural practitioners how Barbadian films can reach international screens. The meeting was a joint effort of the Barbados Film and Video Association and the Barbados Coalition of Service Industries. The Culture Ministry's Permanent Secretary commended such organizations for their role in the development of the film industry, which she believes encompasses all arts being supported by the Cultural Industries Bill. There is music, dance, drama, sound, lighting, photography, fashion, all inputs in the industry to the industry, just to name a few. Film, as it were, is the incubator where all these elements interact to give birth to something tangible to be enjoyed by all. Barbadians are responding to calls to get their eyes tested for glaucoma. Specialists in that field, Dr. Don Grosner says, more people come out every year when free tests are offered as part of Glaucoma Week. 
This year, free eye checks were offered at private and public institutions like the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, where the final testing event was held. Dr. Grosvenor says it's critical that people are tested since glaucoma is a silent disease. We know that 7% of people in Barbados have glaucoma. We see that consistently every year when we look back at our results. It's the number one cause of irreversible blindness in Barbados. And unfortunately, there's no cure for glaucoma. But if we can pick it up early enough and treat people early, then we can stop people from going blind altogether. We can reverse that trend towards blindness, even though we can't reverse the disease itself. A social club dedicated to helping children has made a donation to the pediatric department of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. It's the second presentation the Hash House Harriers has made to such an organization. The last one was the Child Care Board. Hash Mistress Monica Herewood says they will continue to focus on the youth in 2016. We have um, toothpaste, toothbrushes, simple soap and Johnson's products, um, cream, shampoos and so forth. In February for Valentine's Day, we had our um, well-known red dress run where all of our hashers dress men and women in red dresses or red apparel and we run. But this year, the hashers themselves donated the majority of funds which were used to purchase these items. Meantime, Sister Sherry Collimore says it is a meaningful contribution to that department. To us, it's very important, they have it, because I think we do have children that come into our area that do not have these simple um, amenities or these simple items that are needed, right? And even so, I think the parents who stay here for a while to overnight, it will be of assistance, especially to them as, as well. We'll still to come and look at some of the stories making headlines across our region. Stay with us.